that. That's why it's so important to declare the word of the Lord. I'm going to let you be seated. In fact, no, don't sit down yet. I was just uh, <laughs> for all of those you that are older that uh, I just made your joints creak. I apologize for that. <laughs> Go with me to the book of Genesis. Light. Hallelujah. It's already been fitted to the bow, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, this arrow has already been fitted to the bow, and the wind of the Holy Spirit is behind it, says the Lord, and it is headed for its target, and it's getting ready to land, saith God, and it's going to penetrate the very heart of evil that has risen up in this land, says the Lord. And when it does, there is going to be a, a death of evil for a season, says God. And the spirit of life is going to begin to resurrect in this atmosphere. For I have heard the groanings of the children of the people of the Lord, and I have not come to sit down with you in your sackcloth and ashes and weep with you, but I have come down to pull you up out of the mire, and I am going to bring you up and out into a large land, saith the Lord, where there is a land of milk and honey, and the blessing of God shall be upon thee, and the heavens are being opened by the hand of God this hour over the people of the Lord and the prayers of the saints have opened the heavens and there is going to be much movement of angels saith God coming forth from heaven down to the earth and from earth up to heaven and also saith the Lord the angels of God are going to lay hold on demon spirits and not take them up into the heavens but pull them down to the pits of hell and bind them with chains for this is a new season saith the Lord for the rest of this year evil will begin to diminish and righteousness will begin to flourish and when 2025 hits saith God it is the beginning of a great opening in heaven where the windows of God are opened by the spirit of the Lord and the storehouses of God are going to begin to be emptied hallelujah I am going to cause angels to be so busy because they're going to work as men in a warehouse and I am going to tell them empty out the storehouse of God and the windows of heaven are being opened and out of those windows are going to begin to come answers to long-term prayers long-term healings miracles are going to be released by the power of God the spirit of heaviness that has been upon my people that has weighted you down I am breaking that spirit, saith the Lord, and there's going to be a lightness that's going to get a hold of thee. You're going to begin to rise as a bloom filled with helium, and you're going to begin to ascend into high places. And even as the wing eagle spreads its wings and begins to fly in the atmosphere, so am I giving wings to the people of God for this hour and the weights that have so easily beset thee that have held on to thee not the sin for you are not with sin but the weights that the enemy is attached to you that have held you down the sword of the Lord which is the prophetic word of God that's being released out of the spirit hallelujah it's going to begin to cut loose the weights that have been upon thee and I'm going to cause you to begin to arise hallelujah with healing in your wings for I pronounce over this house the blessing of God for there has been evil men and women there has been witchcraft that has pronounced a curse against this house and against the people of the Lord but I say this day that I am reversing the curse and what the enemy intended for evil I am going to declare for good and what the enemy said would happen to you I'm going to make happen to them there's going to be a wailing begin to come up out of the realm 
of evil men and women in this nation and for what they have done to you I am going to cause the angels to do to them for this is not an hour saith the Lord that the church is going to be coming to demise but even I am raised up in this hour we're going to invade New York City saith God for I have already said that when the wave of God hits the United States of America it would start on the east coast there is a tidal wave saith God of the glory of the Lord that is getting ready to hit the east coast and even as New York City is the heart of finance it's the heart of the United Nations Madison Square Garden is the heart of entertainment over this nation and God says I'm going to the stronghold of the enemy and I'm going to invade it by the power of God there will be no demise there will be no aspect that the enemy can perpetrate on my purpose for I have raised men up for this hour saith the Lord I am yanking them out of obscurity I'm yanking them out of the pit of despair I am pulling them out of the places of being unknown and I'm going to take a people who are not a people and I'm going to make them the people of the Lord I'm going to take a people that were despised and for your shame I'm going to give you double saith the Lord and the hand of God shall be your portion saith the Lord That was my opening prayer. <laughs> you can be seated. Amen. About a week ago, God began to drop this in my spirit. And obviously, with some of the things that we've seen transpire politically this week, I feel like it would endorse what I'm getting ready to preach to you. If you will remember, I told you that, and I've been saying this for a couple of years, that the Lord said that after 2024, it would begin to get dark in this nation. And I had not understood that. And uh, a few months ago, the Lord began to speak to me. He said, You've misunderstood. It's not about getting dark for the church. It's about getting dark for the kingdom of darkness. And so <clears throat> we're beginning to see God reverse some things. There can never be a miracle without there first being an impossible situation. There can never be the confirmation of the word without there first being the declaration of the word. There can never be fulfilled prophecy without prophecy first being declared. Genesis says this, <clears throat> and the earth was without form and void and darkness, which means misery, sorrow, destruction, despair, all of these adjectives that would describe situations that we don't want to be involved in said that it was upon the face of the deep my wife I think it was her that mentioned to this to me that she was reading uh, a book by Dietrich Bonhoeffer how many is familiar with who he is one of the great great men of all time and he's preaching on cheap grace. What we've had in America with counterfeit churches is a message of cheap grace that you can go to heaven and live any way you want. I think that we need to qualify this because there are too many <clears throat> hardline Christians that preach holiness without mercy it's almost like well I've suffered so I don't want you to get saved because you've already had a good time living in sin so I hope you go to hell we have to have mercy 
but for the grace of God. Every one of us should be judged guilty before the Lord. We all have secret sins. This is why I don't mention names behind the pulpit of men who have fallen simply because What if their failure is under the blood? And I mention their name, then I am guilty of reaching into the blood of Jesus, extracting a sin that should be hid, and publicly displaying again. Then that means that I am going to be judged with the same judgment that that judged that man with. And so it is imperative that we leave things under the blood because there's enough skeletons in this building today that we could create our own graveyard. And so it's imperative. And yet, you cannot allow a small group to cause you to shade the gospel till it loses its power. Grace is not cheap. Sin is so hideous. You say, how do I know that, Pastor? Because look at the death that was required to cancel out sin. It wasn't a man who was brought to a whipping post and said, here's a couple little taps. He wasn't tied to a cross, and they gently set him in the ground and said, can I give you a drink of water? We'll be back in about 15 minutes, and and then sin will be atoned for. No, there was hideous display of torture and great pain. Why? Because of how deep and how horrible sin was. And so the price that was paid for grace is not cheap grace. It's expensive. It costs the very blood of the Son of God. Can you imagine the heart of the Father as he watched Jesus Christ, his Son, the only begotten, stand in glory and begin to disrobe himself of his deity? And the Father watches Jesus as he begins to undress from the priestly garments of the deity of who he was, the second in the Godhead, uh, until he is stripped down uh, and we find himself robed in flesh. And the Father looks at him and he says, uh, Now march on down there, son, uh, and do what nobody else can do except God in flesh who has no sin. And the Father watched as a prodigal boy almost walks away and begins to go down the stairways of the Milky Way until he stands on the old terra firma called earth that is drenched in sin and drenched in ugliness. And the Lamb of God in his beauty, hallelujah, begins to walk across the earth and holiness begins to emanate out through the atmosphere and men walk by and say, oh, there's never been anybody like him and the father watches with a smile from glory as the light of the world begins to light up things the reason the church has failed the world is because we've had the form of God but we sell cheap grace says you can live any way you want still go to heaven I would let everybody in heaven except maybe Hitler or Mussolini or Idi Amin but there's so many that I would let in heaven so many of my family members and uncles and aunts that never gave their heart to Christ that I would say come on in but see there's a price there's it has to be light illuminated in the soul. The beauty of it is that there is no sin that is so deep that grace cannot touch. Wherever you are today, whatever depth that you're in, I give you hope. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son 
that not just the Jews, but whosoever. Did you know your name is whosoever? Hallelujah. The angel said, who got saved? Whosoever shall have eternal life. There's a real spirit of God here today. Did not intend to go this direction, but darkness is literally controlling. There is no light. I was wondering this this morning. How did darkness get there in the first place? Because darkness isn't a thing. It's the absence of light. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, so we know that initially there had to have been light. What was it that made the light of God leave the earth? That opens up a great theological debate where there are other creations and what existed before the earth was without form and void and darkness is upon the face of the deep. Something had to have transpired that so offended God that he left because evil can never march in and tell righteousness to leave. Righteousness is the nature of God. And one day the Bible says that <clears throat> Darkness is upon the face of the deep. It's ruling. <clears throat> and the Bible says, and the Spirit of God moved. Many of you scholars know this. The word move gives the meaning of <clears throat> a mother hen sitting on a nest, hovering and brooding. So, the fact that darkness was there did not mean God wasn't. Amen. That's something that you need to get in your spirit right now as you look at the earth and where we've been. Just because it looks like evil reigns doesn't mean God is not there. It just meant that God wasn't ready to do what he was going to do. <clears throat> he was waiting for something. I think that God was waiting for the right season because seed cannot be planted in the wrong season and survive. And we know in verse 2 it says that God said, we know this, that Colossians says the world was framed by the word of God. The Bible also says that the word of God is the seed of God. So when God steps onto the edge of darkness and he begins to speak, what is he doing? He has been preparing for an implantation of sea to be being released into the atmosphere. And the Bible declares this, that when God began to move, when he began to release the sea, he said this, let there be light. And there was light. It does not say, and two months later, there was a little crack in the atmosphere of a sliver of light. One moment it's dark, and the next moment it's light. Last week it looked pretty rough. This week it looks a lot better. I can tell you by the Spirit of the Lord that we are on the edge of God speaking to the darkness that rules over this earth. And God is beginning, hallelujah. And though it may look 
like uh, that God ain't in a million miles of it. I can tell you this, whatever God creates, he owns. Uh, and if he owns it, he never abdicates. Uh, he never rents a deed to somebody else. Uh, it may look like God ain't in a million miles of your life. Uh, but I can tell you today, uh, God is right in the middle uh, of your mess. Uh, he's right in the middle of your problem. Uh, he's right in the middle of your prognosis. Uh, he's right in the middle uh, of your need. Uh, and it doesn't matter what the devil says. Uh, when God finally says, uh, I've had enough of nighttime, uh, he begins to speak the word, uh, let there be light. And there is light. Just because the Spirit was not moving doesn't mean it wasn't there. When God literally can change a culture, do something that affects a nation or the earth, it generally is suddenly. We've experienced that in the birth of this church. We are a church of suddenly. Hallelujah. We are a people of suddenly. And I'm really excited about going to, to Madison Square Gardens because I believe that, that God is going to release something in the atmosphere. We know that God always, when the Israelites got ready to enter to their inheritance, the Lord said, the first city that you're going to take is the strongest city, the most fortified city, the most powerful city in all of Canaan called Jericho. You would have thought that he would have said Ai, 3,000. Didn't require much of an army to take them. And he said, you know, I'm going to let you get your feet wet and just kind of get a taste of battle. He says, no. He says, first battle you're going to fight, you're going to take on the biggest and the most fortified city in your inheritance. But then he says this, but you're not going to have to do anything. I'm going to do it for you. He said, I just want you to walk around it. And look at, see, God could have gave them a city that didn't have walls, but then we wouldn't have the story of how God can crumble walls. If everything was easy in your life, you wouldn't have any testimony. It is your testimonies that have put rebar in you. It's when you encounter something today or tomorrow that your testimony, hallelujah, is going to rise up and say, uh-uh, we already adulterated word of the Lord and if the weeping may endure for a night but joy cometh in the morning is there anybody in this building that has a shout in your spirit <laughs> hallelujah God always does his greatest work when darkness has been ruling. When Jesus came to the earth as God in flesh, the scripture says, John 1 and 5, that light shined in darkness. And I love this. And the darkness comprehended it not. In um, Malachi, this is the last chapter of the Old Testament. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud and all they that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up. 
you realize he's saying the day that cometh. He's speaking prophetically that there's a day coming. That something's going to happen. <clears throat> Says the Lord of hosts that it shall neither lead them root nor branch. What we're getting ready to see is God is going to rip the roots of evil out of this nation. Because harvest can never be brought in in the dark. There cannot be darkness in this nation. There has to be righteousness ruling. Verse 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. You shall go forth as calves of the stall. You shall tread down the wicked. They shall be ashes under the sole of your feet. In that day that I shall do this, says the Lord of hosts. So it's just a little play on words. But when Jesus came on the scene, Jesus said this. He said, I am the light of the world. When he comes on the scene, the whole nation is being ruled by a religious uh, government. In that day, government and religion was not separated. Religion was the government. And yet the Bible says with this Old Testament law-infused government with high priests and Pharisees and scribes that darkness is in the atmosphere. Just because there's something that looks like a church doesn't necessarily mean it has power. It takes authority, hallelujah, to be a powerful church. I don't care how many people you got in your church. I want to know how many people are being healed. How many people are having demons cast out of them. Uh, how many of them are being prepared uh, that when the trumpet sounds, uh, they step over from this realm uh, into heaven. Hallelujah. I'd rather have a hundred people hold my hand in eternity and say, thank you, pastor, than 3,000 that march into hell because I gave them cheap grace. Uh, I'm telling you, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. We are not a church that says you can live any way that you want. I personally would let you, and I'd let you get in. But I didn't make the rules. I didn't write the book, and I didn't die on the cross for your sins. So we're going to have to pony up, hallelujah, and live the way God said to live. It's his house. It's his church. It's his heaven. It's his body. It's it's his rules. It's his vision. And unless you walk according to the ways of God, you lose. I am not your enemy. I would let everybody get in. Because I know how hard it is to deal with flesh. We're human. We are not a church that's going to rejoice that you burned in hell. We're a church that's going to weep over the fact that you don't know how to get free. But I've got good news. Hallelujah. It's called the gospel of Jesus Christ. That there is nothing, no nothing that my God can't do. There is no problem, no sickness, no addiction, no problem in your life. That there is not an answer in the book. Hallelujah. That says he whom the Spirit has set free is free indeed. I declare today I got me some chain cutters and we're breaking chains in the name of the Lord. So darkness is on the earth when Jesus shows up. Just like it was in the book of Genesis. But when God shows up, look out, because light ain't far behind. So in Jesus' time, the Bible says he shows up, and it says the darkness, same darkness that's in Genesis 1, can't comprehend him. Now, the word brood means it's like a mother 
bird hen sitting on a nest. She is guarding it. And she's protecting it for the right time. Because there are little baby chicks that are getting ready to be birthed into life. Isaiah or Malachi says that God is going to rise with healing in his wings. So he's comparing himself to a bird. Darkness could not comprehend. If you look to the last part of comprehend, it says hen. Darkness couldn't kill the bird. Darkness could not kill Jesus because he was incubating. You know what he's doing for that three and a half years? He was sitting on a nest. And he had healing in his wings. And he was hovering over his disciples because they had not yet been born again. And he was nurturing them. Hallelujah. And now all of a sudden, when you find that God, he, he says this, he said, I am the light of the world. I give you the verse for it. He makes this statement in more than one place, but Jesus said this, <clears throat> John 8 and 12, he says, I am the light of the world. <clears throat> but the later, later on in Matthew, he says this, no, you are the light of the world. And he said, you are like a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. So the Lord says this, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. But he said, the light that I am is getting ready to go back to the Father. But he said, I am not going to leave the earth back into darkness. He said, I'm going to transfer what I am that you are going to become who I am. And the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if it and he was depressed, discouraged. He was intimidated. But when the Holy Ghost got a hold of him, he stood up and he said, Hey, I got something to say. I do know him. I want to identify him. And this is not, the men are not drunken as ye suppose. But this was spoken by the prophet Joel. There are some prophetic utterances that God is releasing in the atmosphere over you and I that are going to come to pass. Now, God is aligning things in our nation. I, I, I don't believe that we have to have a certain individual as president for the word of the Lord to be fulfilled scripturally. But it would be nice to have, an, have a change. <clears throat> And so, you know, we leave that where it is, and I believe that you're going to see, see God do some incredible things that we have all believed and that was prophesied by many, many people that God would do certain things. But I think we would all agree that we live in a very dark time. We are experiencing things that we never, ever thought would happen. I'm still trying to wrap my mind around this gender confusion thing. I can understand homosexuality, but I can't understand how anybody in their right mind is in a man body thinks he's a woman. And I personally think that they are precious people 
that if the church would have done their job like they should have done for the last 25 years, <clears throat> we would have never let those spirits breach this nation the way that they have. And so only the church is the answer. But see, you can't work in the dark. It's very difficult to work in the dark. When I used to, uh, when I was doing pipe fitting in the shipyards and I was working graveyard, <clears throat> we, we didn't install pipe on graveyard. During the day when I worked, we, we put in whole systems and welded and all of those things. But on graveyard, all we did was maintain systems. We monitored systems because it was dark. See, that's where the church has been. We've just been trying to survive. But God doesn't want you to survive. He wants you to not only have joy, but to have it abundantly. To excel in the spirit of the Lord. And so whenever... I want to read uh, out of Isaiah chapter 60 because I think that that this will <clears throat> help you. We can go to Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah 60 and 61, 62 are prophetic chapters dealing with the church. While you're going there, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 13, if you want to put it in your notes, it says this, that evil is going to increase. That's what we're seeing now, and it has taken a accelerated pace that most of us that are in my decades, my age, we don't like it the way it is anymore because we remember when it was really good. If you'd have been born in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s, uh, that's when all great music was written. <laughs> Whether it was the Beatles or Joe Cocker or Ray Charles. Or, but it was also a time when some tremendous songs were written in the church. But your kids could go trick-or-treating and you didn't have to go with them. <clears throat> Nobody got poisoned. Children didn't get kidnapped. Abortion wasn't a problem. Perversion wasn't a problem. Everybody could afford a house. I remember paying 19 cents for a gallon of gas. Now I'm driving 30 miles to get gas. It's 20 cents a gallon cheaper than it is by my house. But Timothy, the letter to Timothy by Paul said this. He said, it's going to get worse. He said, evil is going to increase. What's amazing to me is how did evil increase when we have thousands, probably a thousand churches in America that run at least 2,500 people? We got a church in New York City that runs 36,000. We got churches in Houston and Dallas and L.A. that run 20,000, 10,000. How is it that we can have churches that run in those kind of numbers and we're on television and satellite, but we're absolutely making no impact on the powers of darkness? I got news for you. I don't care how much you are on TV. It's not about are you on TV. It's about when you preach the gospel, what are you releasing by the Spirit of the Lord? Lord, either releasing cheap grace to get them to write buy a book that you wrote that don't have nothing to say or preach a message that's motivationally enticing but doesn't tell you how to get free from depression or discouragement or to get your prodigal back in the house. But there is good news today. Train a child in a way that he should go. And God said, you hold your ground and I'll send an angel to go back and get that child and bring him back. 
back home. That when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord raises up a standard against them. My God, there's enough anointing today in this house to chase every demon out of this building. I lose healing right now in the name of the Lord. By the authority of the Holy Ghost, I heal you in the name of Jesus. I lose a wave of healing, healing, healing in the name of the Lord. Heart disease, sugar diabetes, arthritis in the name of the Lord. Parkinson's disease, be gone in the name of Jesus. We break poverty and lack today. In the name of the Lord, poverty calls tithing a liar. Tithing calls poverty a liar. So in the name of the Lord, we cast out every lying demon of every tither in this building that says you're broken, you're never going to make it. I release upon you the abundance of the Lord. So Isaiah chapter 60 is dealing when there was creation in Genesis, there had to be light. When Jesus came to the earth physically, he had to have light. He became the light. He said, I have to be the light because there's no light in the earth. Pentecost. There had to be light. Suddenly, tongues of fire set upon each of them. There had to be this manifestation of supernatural light. Isaiah 60, verse 1, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Why? For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness, which is literally intense darkness. The people, this is what the coronavirus was about. It's the first time that we've ever seen evil affect the globe at one time. We've watched African nations have genocide. We've watched things happen in India. We've watched over the years something happen in the Ukraine. We've watched it in Uganda with Idi Amin. But we've never seen such tragedy happen worldwide at once. What was that? It was the intent of the evil one to blanket the earth as he did in Genesis 1. That darkness is covering the face of the deep. I feel this in my spirit right now. I bind, I cast out the spirit of depression in this building right now in the name of Jesus. And I cast out the spirit of depression that's driving somebody to suicide right now. In the name of the Lord, I command that spirit to lift in Jesus' name. And I loose you in the Holy Ghost. I loose the light of the glory of God upon you right now in the name of Jesus. That this lying spirit of depression and suicide that's trying to take you out. There's a call of God on your life, says the Lord. And there is an enemy attack against you because of the spirit of God that has purpose in you. The enemy is trying to shut you down. I don't know if you're in this building or if you're online. But in the name of the Lord, by the the authority of the Holy Ghost. I bind the spirit of depression and the spirit of suicide in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I loose the liberty of the Holy Ghost. I loose an invasion. I see a a hot streak of the glory of God. The arrow of the Lord that he prophesied today. uh, It's getting ready to hit somebody in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And you're being saved free by the power of God. <clears throat> this is what we are entering into. If you ask me, Pastor, where is the church in 2024? We are in the middle of brooding. There is a brooding anointing on the house of God right now And when God broods over you, the enemy cannot touch you. And it doesn't matter how 
how intent he is or how intense he is, brooding means that the wings of God are over you or you are in a nest of protection by the presence of the Lord. Now, verse 2, for darkness shall cover the earth. He's prophesying this, speaking of the church. By day, nor brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord, hallelujah, shall be an everlasting light, and thy God, thy glory. The sun shall no more go down, neither shall the moon withdraw itself, for the Lord shall be an everlasting light, and the days of your mourning, hallelujah, the days of your mourning, the days of your lamenting shall come to an end. The people also shall all be righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands that I may be glorified. We are so close to stepping into the fullness of what God has done. How many would, would say, Pastor, I feel like I've been through some of the most intense battles over the last few months. Most of us feel that way. You know what that is? That's the darkness trying to get underneath the wings. Because if the predator can get to the egg and crack the shell before it's time, the embryo dies. But if you can let it reach maturation, How do you know it reaches maturation? Because the eagle stands up and says, it's time to fly. Hallelujah. I hear by the Spirit that there are going to be churches in America that run 20 and 30,000 people in the next few years but we won't be seeker friendly. First thing that's going to happen, says the Lord, is we release the harvest of God. Now in the name of Jesus, open the windows of heaven, O oh God, and begin to drop on this house in the name of the Lord. I begin to drop on this church in the name of the Lord. I release it. I release it. I release it in the name of the Lord. Do you feel something? Hallelujah. Some of you need to get out of the boat in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God says, I'm getting ready to make your last years your most productive. Your you're most powerful. You're most joyful. I'm going to reverse the curse of aging. God said, I'm loosening the cable anointing in this building in the name of the Lord. God said, some of you old folks are going to get feet like Heinz feet, and you're going to find yourself running, and you're going to go, is that me? And there you go across the front of the church because of the glory and the anointing of God. I feel like shackles are being broken. I feel some change falling off in the name of Jesus. I hear a shout. Oh, hallelujah. I got a praise, and I want to let it out. I feel an anointing in the Holy Ghost. Shake yourself in the Spirit of God. This attack of the enemy that's come against you, we reverse it, reverse it in the name of Jesus, and we lose the glory of God. Our prayer partners come quickly. The Bible says this, that hell hath enlarged itself. Half of them are in China and India alone. India is now the largest nation in the world, has surpassed China. There's almost 5 billion people in those two countries alone. That leaves about 3 billion on the rest of the face of the earth. But there have been too many missionaries in India for the soil not to produce a harvest. Hallelujah. There have been too many missionaries that have went to China. Too many Bibles been smuggled in. 
Too many people have been killed for the glory of God. Uh, too many men like Watchman Nee that died in prison because they pinned the words of liberty on parchment pages in the cell uh, with their arms being bound. Uh, too much of the gospel has been preached. Uh, too much seed has been planted in the atmosphere over this earth for there not to be a release of harvest in the name of the Lord. Uh, so your minds, uh, I lose your mind today uh, to get a revelation uh, that if God be for us nobody can be against us before we come collectively as a church if you need a prayer partner to come into agreement with you you say why do we do this because the Bible says if any two or three agree on anything that means there is no need that you have that you can't come grab a prayer partner and then come into your agreement about that God has to answer. Hallelujah. So we'll give you just a moment. Our praise team is getting ready to come and lead us in worship. There is a shout getting ready to be released out of the body of Christ. I think we're on the last day of surrounding Jericho I don't know what lap we're on they had seven laps and on the seventh lap on the seventh day God said okay all that's been built up and you let it out and with a shout the walls came down I believe the walls of darkness in our country and other countries are coming down <clears throat> in the name of Jesus now let's come together as a church let's come to this altar I know we don't have benches much but this is an altar and when you approach the altar that's where God will meet you this is why it's important to, to get 